We can't go through the mini thing. Right. Yeah. Oh. Annual reports for the British societies should be read by the secretary. So you have asked me. I'm not the secretary. So I'm just representing Mr. Gardner. And we go first to the <coughs> annual report for the Jamaica Red Bull Canterbury Society. And it reads thus, the Managing Committee of the Jamaica Red Pole Category Society takes pleasure in presenting the annual report and financial statements for the year ending May 31, 2018 to the 65th annual joint meeting at Windalco, Gold Place, Manchester, on Wednesday, July 11, 2018. The Livestock Industry. Jamaica is a well-developed livestock industry with three beef breeds and one dairy breed. These performed well in their trappings. The industry was on the growth path, but due to challenges such as high cost of production, competitions from imports, the high incidence of last net cattle, high capital outlay for startup operation have resulted in the decline of the industry. The decline is significant among all the breeds. The government and the cattle breeder societies are working to rebuild the industry. The absence of succession planning is a serious problem as a number of livestock farms go out of business. The Jamaica Red Pole. The Jamaica Red Pole is an outstanding cattle breed. Cattle breed that possess most of the desirable traits that could be expected from a beef cattle. From beef Since cattle, it should take out A. From beef cattle, yeah. right. Since the breed was developed in 1952, significant improvements are visible while research and development work is ongoing. The planned breeding program, car for registration, annual appraisal have manifested in the development of several outstanding herds across the island. The Jamaica Red Pole is a preferred beef breed among local beef cattle farmers. The society has initiated a semen bank which currently has 650 straws from 10 bulls representing seven side lines from three leading members. The other five breed, the other three. What is this? <laughs> they call it three. The other three breeds will join this activity in the very near future. I don't know what five is doing yet. Yeah, right. Sorry about that. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, yeah. The Denby Show. The Denby Show 2017 showed improvement over the last five years. The number of cattle presented was the most in the last five years. The Jamaica Red Pole cattle presented were from four farms. And we can take that as red yes, for sir. farm listed. Mm -hmm. From the Jamaica Red Pole presented, as Red Pole presenting, from the Jamaica Red Pole exhibited, the, those were the members, the, what is this? They are the winners of different categories. Can we take that as red? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. The Minard Livestock Show and Beef Festival. The Minard Livestock Show and Beef Festival is held at Agro Investment Corporation, Media Estate, on Thursday, November 9, 2017. The show benefited from target sponsorship of Newport Mills. It was the second year sponsorship from Newport Mills, and the goat scrambler, which started in 2016, has become a major attraction. The show has become a major attraction for students, livestock farmers, and other are cultural enthusiasts. And the major activities were taken as read. Yeah. The Jamaica Red Pole Newsletter. The Jamaica Red Pole Newsletter is a biannual publication. The latest edition has proved to be informative and members are asked to contribute articles. 
publications are shared with members of the World Red Bull Congress. It, that should be conference, should be Congress. Congress, right, right, right. right. The Managing Committee. The affairs of the site were administered by the Managing Committee comprising, and you can take that as red, red yes. and then we have ex-official members, the Director of Veterinary Services from the Ministry of, Commer of Industry, Commerce, Arcos and Fisheries, the Deputy Director of Livestock, from, also from MICAF, and the recording officer, also from MICA. We had associate members, Mr. Jimmy Lewis from Manneville, is present with us today, and Mrs. Jasmine Honis out of Kingston. Also with us today. Honorary life member, Mr. James McGee of the McMarshall Farms, Wa Washburn, Illinois, in the USA. And last but not least, our secretary, Mr. Lanford Gardner. Not Gardena, it's, it's supposed to be Mr. Gardner. No, it's not the pain. The managing committee had four meetings during the year, and the dates are listed there. There are two meetings of all breed societies, that joint meetings of the all breed, all the four category societies. And one was held in May, May 25, 2017, another one in November 27, 2017. Errol Flynn is state and with alcohol due to retire, but are eligible for re-election. Finances, the summary is attached. Registration and appraisal report, the summary is attached. Acknowledgement. The Managing Committee extends their thanks to the following. A. Windalco for hosting today's activities. B. The Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries. C. The members of the private sector who made valuable contribution during the year. And D the members and guests in attendance at the annual general meeting. That's the presentation of the annual report for the Jamaica Red Bull. The income and expenditure statement is attached. I just want to say that as far as the Ministry of Agriculture is concerned, it's a very complex and wide-ranging ministry, touching over 45% of the production sector. And it keeps us very busy. And uh, with that, it helps to underscore the very pivotal role that agriculture plays in the national economy by way of primary production for local and export markets. And as input into the manufacturing sector. Very often when we talk about agriculture, we tend to talk disproportionately about crops and perhaps far less about the livestock sector. I'm very happy to be here again to see if we can collaborate together as to how we must improve the performance in this subsector. But somehow I feel that there is not enough dialogue taking place between the beef sector and the Ministry of Agriculture. It is one where we find that the plant sector, the crop sector, is getting much more prominence than the beef sector. And I am trying to find out now as to how we can bring the animal, especially the Red Pole Breeders Association, into the mainstream. And I would like, I, I don't know where you can fit in, but I would love to see if you come on, might be one of the boards where you can have an input into the decision-making process of what is taking place. Because right now, if you look at it, we have a lot of boards in the Ministry of Agriculture right now. But not one I see do I have a representative from this association. Nobody asks us to come, sir. 
Okay, have, okay. Has anybody made any representation that you would like to be? Because you have persons here who know about the ministry function, you know, and who are aware of where persons can come on. And so I am throwing out the invitation that might be we could start at a rather board where there can be some input. The other thing, I don't know where we are, but there has been a lot of proposals put as far as a livestock development board is concerned. This can go a far way in assisting the whole development of the livestock industry. And I think you all were at the forefront of driving this, but I don't know where it is at because we need to get the beef breed. The dairy breed is way ahead. They have the funding. So if we could merge them, so you can get part of the funding. I don't know where it is at. Mm -hmm. It is in your hands to get the Livestock Development Board. If it, if it even means for me to get your association, the Livestock um, Board, the um, Dairy Development Board, meeting together and see if you can merge something, I have not a problem. But I can't do it myself without getting somebody saying something that you, can, you want to go this way or you want to go that way. Because right now, millions of dollars are there in the dairy board. They are going to be developing. So I am just throwing that out to you to see how it can go. As it relates to the Jamaica Black Pole, I understand it's hailed as a limousine of all the local breeds. I am aware that the declining numbers of this breed is of concern. That's why I sort of got involved to see if we can keep it going. Mm -hmm. To address this, the ministry has launched an initiative to conserve the breed. Already, we're looking at the local population and we have conducted uh, some sort of survey and the ministry is in the process of acquiring new genetics from overseas to infuse into its own herd. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, the sustainable development of the agricultural sector and its various subsectors, include the livestock subsector, require that we keep abreast of modern technology and systems. In this regard, the ministry is also mindful of the role that research and development has to play in both the crops and livestock development. Our goal is to transform the sector into one which is research-oriented, technology-driven, market-driven, and private sector-led. That is why the ministry has embarked on the redevelopment of our Bordeaux Research Station in St. Catherine, under an $800 million project. Wow. We have continued the rehabilitation work in this financial year with the allocation of some $300 million for the upgrading of the piggery unit to first world standard, which will allow us to produce genetic material for high quality pigs. Upgrading of our labor laboratories improving the road network, farm buildings, water supply, and irrigation systems, and improving our pastures, greenhouses, and seed and post-harvest facilities. At this point in time, they are in a deplorable condition. Yeah, that's right. And we have I had to be asking the dairy board to come in and assist and give some financial help in that Aspect. While we are improving the infrastructure capabilities, we are also focusing on our human capital as we restructure the division to allow for the retention and att 
attraction of highly skilled staff. The ministry is also in the final stages of contracting two consultants, one to provide DNA analysis to enhance the breeding program for local herds, and the other to train local technicians in embryo transfer technologies so that once superior females have been identified, they can rap rapidly multiply. This technology also allows for embryo to be conserved for years, ensuring that the decline of the beef industry in the 1990s can be mitigated and we can look to a strong revitalize beef sector. Ladies and gentlemen, one of our main problems right now is predial arsenic. It is one of those areas that many persons want to come into agriculture, want to go into rearing animals, but they are afraid of the predial teeth. And we have to be looking to see how we can counteract it. At the policy level, what we are looking at is looking at the Agricultural Produce Act. And with that act, we are looking to increase the fine for anybody who is caught that they have to pay up to three million dollars. But on top of that, I am having great concern when somebody is caught, you find that they go before the judge and the judge, many of them somehow don't look at Peter Larsney as important. And you find that many of them only get a tap on the wrist. And they go out, and in many cases, what they have stolen is even more than the fine that they are charged. So it encourages them to go back out there and say, well, I will pay a $10,000, whereas a bully steals for 400000 Just goes. I am wanting to put in this Agricultural Produce Act. And I am going to send it out for all of you who are involved. That I want to have anybody who is convicted, he must make restitution to the victim of the offense by returning the agricultural item or he must pay to the victim an amount equal to the value of the agricultural commodity that was stolen. In other words, if he steals, well, I'll go and say a bull, but some of us lose a truckload of animals. And my thing is that if they come and they catch him, he is fine. The court finds him. But on top of that, if the animals that he steals come to half a million dollars, he must pay the person who he steals it from the half a million dollars, including the fine which the court charges him. If he can't pay, then they will find something where they seize his property or something where it is returned with the amount of money. I feel strongly that we need to let them understand that if they are going to go and steal anything, whatever the cost that they steal, they must be able to return it. So that is one of the things that I am looking at to see if we can put into the Produce Act. We also have the National Identification and Traceability System. As you are all aware, the National 
cattle tagging program is also part of the modernization plan aimed at strengthening the traceability of the animals. With your cooperation, the, co the program is continuing apace and some 24,470 heads of cattle have been affixed with the tags and issued the corresponding passport. Ladies and gentlemen, be assured that as government we are committed to provide the policy and regulatory framework that will restore the waste places as we build a modern and competitive beef industry that is capable of responding to market demands. I would just like to thank you all for your own commitment and dedication and I look forward to continuing the good working relationship that exists between the ministry and the Red Pole Cattle Beaters Society. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Okay.